Welcome back to part three of our series on Gruber Motor Company. In this final episode on Gruber, we hear the stories of the individual Teslas that have ended up here. Pete Gruber is back as our host, taking us through the troubled paths that each car suffered to end up in this world-class service center. Gruber is offering these Tesla vehicles a second life, perfecting the process of restoring these cars and getting them back out on the road again. Grab your box of tissues because you might cry watching this video, hearing the stories of all these cars. There's always a backstory when a car um, when a car arrives here. This one, for example, has only 1,400 miles on it, but it's actually been bricked twice. And um, the uh, the backstory is usually a sad one. Um, someone owned the car, loved it, died. The widow didn't know it needed to be charged. She was grieving, and eventually they get around to the car and say, "Well, this car doesn't run anymore." Unfortunately, this one was bricked twice. I don't know the story on the second bricking, but uh, this is actually a 3.0 battery upgrade car, and it was bricked again. Um, we're still trying to uh, find a way to bring that 3.0 battery pack back to life because it was bricked longer than we usually um, are able to, um, uh, to bring cars back within the time frame. Parts cars. We buy these at auction, and usually when you have damage, it's uh, typically front end on the roadsters. Um, and if it gets into the frame, like in this one, you can see the aluminum frame here is compromised. There's a control arm that actually couples to this frame. When they get this bad, um, there's no feasible cost-effective way to put something like this back on the road because you really have to change the frame. Um, the interesting thing is you see the, um, uh, the orange bond right here. This was a Lotus um, innovation, and it turns out that the orange bonding material is actually stronger than aluminum. So most of this car is glued together. Um, this portion right here is what they call the crash box. It's a carbon fiber uh, crash box, and it takes the brunt of the damage typically. Staying with the uh, notion that every car has a backstory, this is another interesting one. This particular car here is one of three that came to us. This, these three cars, this one, the gray one back there, and one that has already left that, was, um, uh, that had a battery pack replaced by us, was at a consignment uh, sales shop. Um, and the, uh, they didn't realize that they needed to keep these cars charged. Six months later, they realized their error, and uh, they ended up selling them as bricked roadsters. So what we're doing now is um, we are uh, recovering the battery packs. They have bad sheets in them. There's a shortage of sheets from time to time. So we're waiting until some come available to actually put these two other cars back on the road. I saw this on eBay about five months ago and they clearly advertise it as a bricked roadster. Um, we bid on it until it got north of $25,000. Um, if you do the math, a $25,000 brick car with a $30,000 battery pack option uh, puts you into a neighborhood where you're paying more than a car that is fully functional. So I watched it go up to 25, 30, 35. It sold for $41,000. And I immediately suspected whoever bought this had no clue what brick meant. Sure enough, within three days, the, um, of the, um, of the company selling it came to us and said, you know, when the seller um, went to pay us and said, I'm gonna fly in and drive it home, they said, it's not drivable. That's when the customer found out what brick meant. So uh, it came to us, we've recovered the battery pack, but it ended up with a VMS problem. And that's what we're working on currently to try to resolve. We also buy Model S cars and um, we buy flood damage cars. We don't like doing body work or spraying paint. They did some special things with the signature models. They had beautiful paint, 21 inch wheel standard, dual chargers, and um, you can see that uh, if you walk around the car it's almost perfect. The problem is at the auction houses they consider these cars scrap. They run forklifts into the tires. They run them into the door sometimes. They just beat them up. The only damage this one sustained was a little bit of damage here with the paint. And, uh, but the rest of it is, um, 
perfect. Um, the other problem that we have with this car is at auction houses, the insurance companies sometimes classify these cars as destruction title cars. We found out the hard way what that means is that you can't ever drive this in the United States again. And uh, so we have to sell this out of the country or I have to get a hold of Jay Leno and say, look, you don't drive your cars. Do you want one of the first 100 you know, Model S's? And we think that that's gonna resonate with him. Um, other cars, here's a 60, for example. Uh, this has only 2,000 miles on it, 2048. It's a panoramic roof. Um, they are typically, this one doesn't have a battery, they are typically uh, fairly clean because we carefully select the cars we buy. We usually pick cars that have a low water line. And based on the water line, we know exactly what's wrong with the car. If you get to a, to a certain level or you get uh, water in the cabin, you can, you can bet your chargers are shot. They're underneath the rear seat. If it's a little higher than that, then your seat control modules are shot. If it gets higher than that, then your VMS board in the passenger compartment here is shot. And by the time it gets into the MCU, don't buy the car. It's going to be a nightmare from there. Um, this car, with only 2,000 miles, still has a new car odor. Now here's an interesting car here. This one still had the sticker, and you can see that at the auction houses when they take their crude pictures of these cars. It's a 100D, and we suspected that either the owner wasn't going to take his tag off or this was a fairly new car. So this car finally arrives here. It had a very low water line. It came from New Orleans before the, um, um, uh, the hurricanes. And uh, we were actually able to drive this off the transporter because it had dried up enough on the trip here where it was drivable. Well, it didn't stay that way. There were some connectors that needed to be repaired. But once we hacked into the, um, uh, the MCU, we were able to get owner information. Typically with these cars, when they get flood damage, the electronics shut down at some time or at some point, and the, um, uh, the previous owners um, can't get into the system to take out their personal information. Typically what we do is we not only get in, we retrieve personal information, we guard it carefully, but we take any personal items in the car and then send that to them. This car has 597 miles on the odometer. When we got a hold of the owner, he said, I only had the car four days. I was driving down a rain-soaked street in Louisiana. There was about an inch of water in the road. It looked like a fairly wide road. I went to pass on the right and he drove it into a four-foot culvert. So there was fresh water damage along the side here. Um, this car actually still has a new car odor. Um, the seats are snow white. They're soft leather. Fortunately, unlike the other cars that usually have some auction rash, this one has no body damage whatsoever. No scratches, no dings and dents, and it came in very clean. Here's another car that came out of Louisiana. Um, we saw this at auction. We saw the broken window here. We saw the broken rear window here, which we've replaced, and the broken window here on the passenger side. We assumed a tree had fallen on the car, so we were prepared to do body work. By the time the car arrived here, we were looking at all this broken glass and looking at the body, and it was perfect. We could not figure out how all that glass would have gotten broken other than vandalism, but even with vandalism, somebody swinging a bat and hitting this window, I'm not sure would have tried to avoid the metal structure here. So again, got into the MCU, contacted the owner. He said, you know, my garage started to flood. I had 18 inches of water in the garage. The car began to shut down. I couldn't get in the car, and I'm a manufacturer's rep, and I had to get my samples out for a meeting the following day. So I called the insurance company, and they told me, well, just break a window and get in the car. Well, he loved his car. He couldn't abuse his car that way. So he called his neighbor in the evening, who had already been drinking a bit, and he let him start breaking windows. So the first thing his neighbor does is he starts smashing this. Well, there's a plastic membrane that runs in between the sheets of glass, so you can't really get through here easily. So then he decides, well, this is too hard. I'm going to break this small window here and reach in and open the back door. The problem with these Model S's is when the battery shuts down, the back door handle doesn't work. So then he decides to break a third window, which is this one, and finally gets in the car. Today we, um, 
we have another problem with this car, which is that the, that the MCU screens go dead. We have three cars, actually, that are in that state right now. And um, it has to do with um, the chips are uh, reading and writing beyond their capacity. So we're developing a method now of putting a socket onto these MCUs and replacing those uh, chips with a more robust chip that can handle more reads and writes. We haven't perfected that process yet, but that'll be another aftermarket product that we'll be offering. We have a bright green wrapped car that we bought at auction. We had no idea what exactly it was because when they wrapped the car, they took the badging off. But my son has an astute eye. We saw 21 inch wheels. We saw an E-code in the VIN and he noticed the back rest on the seat and he said, those are usually in P100D ludicrous. And sure enough, when we received this car, it turns out it's a P100D Ludacris. Um, again, you can see the auction houses are none too kind to these cars, so even if we wanted to keep that wrap, there are a lot of spots that would have to be redone. The same carnage exists on the other side, on the door, and then in the front here. Um, <clears throat> this particular car, um, we bought actually 22 of these Model S's during the, um, um, the hurricanes, flood damage cars. About a third of those are back on the road, either sold, lease, or in, in some use. But because we're so busy these days with Roadster projects, we're not able to finish off um, a lot of these cars. This particular one um, had saltwater damage. And um, you can usually spot that fairly quickly when you see barnacles on the chargers underneath the rear seat. Um, so this is going to take a while longer to, um, uh, to recover, but fortunately the water level was fairly low and uh, we think that the damage is confined to the wiring harnesses underneath the seats and the chargers. We did pull a battery pack on this and it was probably the cleanest we've seen yet. There are two big heavy blade connectors with some CAN bus connectors and they were absolutely spotless. So the little rubber boot that keeps the water out did its job with this particular car. We also have parts roasters here and these are a combination of uh, different types of purchases. Some of them were purchased from private individuals. One was from a gentleman that started to uh, rebuild a roadster and uh, it was too time consuming, too costly, so he gave up. We ended up buying the car for parts. This particular car here used to have some skins on it in a front end. This was bought at the auction and uh, the pictures look pretty good. And um, um, here's another buyer beware story. So we saw fenders on it. We saw the windshield was smashed. Couldn't quite figure out why because there was a fender there. It had doors. And uh, by the time we got it, we realized that someone had tried to restore this car, had given up on it, but then the goal was to make it look very presentable so it would sell for lots of money at the auction. Basically putting lipstick on a pig. Um, it turns out that we bought it for parts anyway, so all was not lost, and we got it at a pretty decent price. But uh, again, I have heard of stories of cars that are being sold at auction, like Model S's, and um, I think uh, Rich, or one of the guys in the industry, was saying that they were pushing the car. It seemed very light, only to realize that there was no battery pack under the car. And of course, you go back to the auction houses, and uh, their uh, caveat is, well, we have a disclaimer. You need to come out and look at the car before you buy it. And if you fail to do that, then, you know, it's buyer beware.